Hey there again, it's Adam. Welcome back to yet another video tutorial for MFC Deck. Now, before we get started, I have a very special guest I'd like you to meet. Let's bring him in. Hey there, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers? Hi there, I'm being Adam Assistant. And what are we going to talk about today? NFC Deck. NFC Deck? Surely you mean MFC Deck. MFC Deck used to be called NFC Deck since it was focused on NFC tag support and shortcuts, but as it gained a lot more power and functionality, I changed the name to MFC Deck, which does what? It <laughs> makes people think they shouldn't have bought Launch Cuts. <laughs> no, 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 no. Launch Cuts was my first iOS app that brought folder support to iOS 13 shortcuts. Now, we all know in iOS 14, the Shortcuts app has built-in support for folders, but there's still a few features that aren't supported yet that are in launch cuts, such as nested folders and tags. Maybe I'm giving the shortcuts team some hints as to what they should build into iOS 15, but until then, you can still use launch cuts on iOS 14. Now, back to the question again. What does MFC Deck do? MFC Deck creates dynamic control deck and cards that run shortcuts, present information, then commands via Mac OS applications, power NFC tags, and automatically run shortcuts. Display these decks and cards in the home screen widget on your Apple Watch and in assistant voice responses. That was quite the description. I need you to do marketing for me. It's exactly right. Today's video tutorial will be about all about MFC Deck, giving an overview of all its features and functionality and how you can use MFC Deck to supercharge your shortcuts. Thank you very much, Adam's assistant. We'll talk to you later. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Decks and cards are fundamental building blocks within MFC Deck. Think of decks like folders and cards like actions, actions that might run a shortcut, open a deck, or open or get the contents of a URL. Let's take a closer look at a deck by creating one. We'll tap the plus in the deck list and we'll create our first deck and we'll call it test deck. You can set the layout of the deck and the layout is how the cards are displayed within the deck. We have square, adjustable grid, and four types of album layouts. You can change the sort of cards within the deck, sort by name, by tag, or manual. You can rearrange cards if you have the sort set to manual. We're gonna hide the search and filter bar for right now, and we're gonna set a custom icon and color for our deck. Tap done and we have our new deck. We're gonna create a couple cards. We'll create a blank card and we'll create a new card. We'll give it the shortcut it will run will be this shortcut right here. And this shortcut takes as input a number. So we're gonna set the input type to text, although we could also set it to the clipboard, the current result, which is a piece of information that you can store in a card or a data jar, toolbox pro or gizmo pack variable. And we're gonna set the input to the number two and we're going to tap done. You'll see a shortcut has been created, or rather a card has been created that will run this shortcut and send the input number two to it. We're going to tap this. It will open up the shortcuts app and you'll see the flashlight turns on. Now, I could have changed this value to say the number four. And when I run this, it will run the shortcut with the input type four. That means you could have multiple cards within a deck that run the exact same shortcut, but with different input. Now, I think there's a bug in iOS 14.3 where the input value isn't copied over unless you quit and restart the shortcuts. I'm gonna follow a bug with Apple about that. But for now, I quit out of the shortcuts app and I'm gonna run this card and it's gonna flash four times now before returning back to MFC deck. And there we go. Now, if all MFC Deck was was to run shortcuts, that'd not be very interesting. But here we're going to do something different. We're going to run the Office Status shortcut. And what this shortcut does is it returns a card result JSON object. And this can transform how the widget is displayed within MFC Deck. It can also be turned into an iOS 14 home screen widget or displayed in a Siri voice response or shown on your Apple Watch. So now when I run Office Status, watch what happens. It opens up shortcuts, runs the shortcut, and returns a visual representation of the shortcut's response. And in this case, it's a status of my office light. So I have 
one, two, three, four, five lights on and one light off. A powerful feature within MFC Deck is its ability to set the availability or rate limit a card. Let's take a look. Here we have our test deck and we have the toggle flashlight shortcut running when we tap on this card. We can set the availability or schedule by which the card can run under the availability section when editing a card. We're going to set it to run on the weekends. So now this card, if I tap on it, can only run on Sundays and Saturdays. You can see the flashlight will flash four times. Now, say for instance, we wanted to set it so that it only ran on the weekdays. We would scroll down to hit availability and set it to weekday. Now, when I try to run this exact same card, nothing happens because today is Sunday and it's not the weekday. We can also set the rate limit of a card. So let's say we only wanted this card to run every 15 seconds. So if I tap that, it's set to run on the weekends every 15 seconds. So now if I tap this, the shortcut will run and it will flash four times and return myself to MSC deck. But if I tap it again, nothing happens because it's still within that 15 second interval. When the 15 seconds have elapsed, I can run the shortcut again. There you go. So now the shortcut will run again and it will wait another 15 seconds before you can tap on it again. So that's how you can use the availability, schedule, and rate limiting features within MFC Deck to control how often a shortcut can run. MFC Deck offers a variety of ways to supercharge your use of NFC tags. Here's an example. I have a booklet which has a 5x4 grid of NFC stickers, and you can configure shortcuts to run a shortcut automatically whenever you tap on one of these NFC tags. But when you use it with NFC Deck, you can do a lot more things. But first, let's show you what happens. I'm going to tap on this sticker in the D5 position. And we'll see that the office lights turn off. I'm going to turn the lights back on. Podcast purple. Lights have turned back on. And what happens is I'm going to now change the deck. I'm going to go into the evening deck. Now, I have a personal automation that runs when... Uh, in the evening that sets the current deck to the evening deck. Uh, and in the morning, it sets the default deck to the normal NFC deck. And you can see here a visual representation of um, the this deck is very similar to, to the physical booklet that I have here, a 5x4 grid. And we see now that the D5 position is office off, flashlight on. So now what this does is since this evening deck is the default deck, I'm going to run this shortcut by tapping on the NFC. And you'll see that the flashlight turns on and the lights turn off. So you can see how by changing what deck you're running, you can change what happens when you run a particular NFC tag. I have another video which goes into greater detail on how to use NFC tags with MSC deck. So be sure to check it out. But for now, that's a quick overview on how you can use MSC deck with NFC tags. The MFC Deck Trigger Server is a powerful way to run shortcuts automatically on an interval whenever MFC Deck is in the foreground. Let's take a closer look. So here we have MFC Deck. I'm going to tap on Triggers, and we see a bunch of triggers. They're all disabled because we have the red dot, but you can see the, the schedule by which it runs, each one runs. So for instance, we have a toggle flashlight, and it runs every 30 seconds on every day. I'm going to enable this. and we're going to tap on the start monitoring. So what this is doing is every few seconds, it will check to see if there's any new triggers that need to run. And since this toggle flashlight one runs every 30 seconds, it will now move to the shortcuts app, run the shortcut, and return back to MFC deck. And the trigger server will remain active. It will wait in the foreground. You can tap the screen and nothing will happen until you tap on these four corners to exit the trigger server. And we'll wait a few more seconds before the toggle flashlight trigger becomes active again.
So within a few seconds, you'll see that the toggle flashlight trigger becomes active. We wait a few more seconds and then the actual shortcut will run again. The trigger server will return, stay in the foreground and wait for the next shortcut to run. So you can have this running in the foreground uh, and have MSC Deck continually run shortcuts you know, for you while you're not using your iOS device. For instance, you could be driving a car and checking some information on the web and keeping your attention on the road while MFC Deck does its work. So I'm gonna tap this button to exit out the trigger server. There's some options within the trigger server for the monitoring interval, how often it checks for new triggers. Uh, you can disable screen lock so that the device won't go to sleep. And within each trigger, you can see it's very similar to a card. You have an action, running a shortcut, changing decks, or pinging URLs. You can set the availability, and the toggle flashlight one, which is enabled, runs every day, but has a rate limit of 30 seconds. So that's the MFC Deck trigger server. MFC Deck comes with a variety of features to supercharge your automations. And I have a, another video that goes into greater detail that you can look into this, but here's a quick peek. I have an automatic deck that runs automatically every 15 minutes. And how do I set that up? Within the Shortcuts app, I have, as you can see here, automations that run from 8 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m. every 15 minutes. And the shortcut that it does is very simple. It says, run the automatic deck, which will tell MSD Deck to run every card that's in here. So you take a look here, I have a back of my shortcuts shortcut that runs uh, every day, but it's set to rate limit at every 14 hours. But the shortcut also runs from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. So that no matter what, anytime this runs during the day, it will only run once a day. So I'm guaranteed that my, back, my shortcuts will be backed up to iCloud. I have other shortcuts that run every hour. So speak text hourly, um, speak the time hourly. And I have other shortcuts that set my morning deck only in the morning from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. And I have something that sets my evening deck from 8 p.m. to 11.59 p.m. Similarly, I have shortcuts that set my watch face in the morning, during the workday, and in the evening. Finally, I have an update weather deck card that updates my weather deck once an hour. So here you see that the uh, weather conditions for the locations that I'm interested in were last updated at 4 p.m. But when five o'clock rolls along and the deck gets run by my automation, the weather will be updated for 5 p.m. Now, I also have, uh, in my other video, I show how you can set up personal automations for all the triggers that can run automatically without confirmation. Things like turning on and off airplane mode or when your wake up alarm is stopped or snoozed. All those things turn on and they can run every shortcut that's listed in this deck. And because you can set the availability and rate limit, you're guaranteed that you know when you turn on or when you plug your device to power or disconnect it, it's not running the same shortcut every single time if you like plug and unplug your, your cable. And so that's a brief overview on automations within MFC Deck. An exciting feature in version 1.1 of MMC Deck is background automation. This works in conjunction with the background automation shortcut, which I'm going to describe right here. When you run it, it allows you to create a background event trigger, something that doesn't exist in iOS 14, a repeating interval between 10 and 90 seconds where you can run shortcuts in the background when you're in other apps. Here's how it works. You set the trigger method to either low power mode or do not disturb mode. We're going to set it to low power mode. And the way it works is it's going to toggle low power mode very quickly. And it's going to detect using a personal automation when you do this quick toggle of low power mode. And then it's going to run an action. The action can be running a shortcut, running all the cards in the deck, or running an individual card. Here, we're going to have it run a deck. So we're going to have it run the background deck right there. And I'm going to quit out of this for a second and show you what the background deck looks like. So this has four cards, and it's going to run the shortcuts attached to these cards. So one is flipping on and off a virtual switch. The second one is updating all the cards in the automatic deck. So that's going to run all these cards in this automatic deck. Third, it's going to toggle the flashlight. And finally, it's going to run the background watcher shortcut, which instructs Scriptable 
to set a reminder five minutes in the future to remind me to turn back on the background automations server if it was found uh, to be stopped. So we're going to go back to shortcuts and we're going to kick it off. Let's say start. And you'll see very quickly in the upper right hand corner, low power modes toggled quickly on and then turned off. And you'll see that all the shortcuts are now running in the background. I can go to different apps, I can go into MFC deck, and you'll see the flashlight flash four times after all the shortcuts, um, the previous shortcuts are run within the background uh, deck. So virtual switch, automatic deck. Okay, and there it is, it's toggling the flashlight. Now it took a little while because I think the audit, all these cards in the automatic deck were running. So now we're going to wait a few more seconds and you'll see in the upper right hand corner, low power mode will turn back on and then back off. And then background automations will kick in and the whole process will start all over again. So I can be in another app. See, low power mode just turned on and it turned off. My shortcuts are running. You can't see it, but they are running. And then soon the flashlight will turn back on. So this is the way, if you wanted to run shortcuts like every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds or 90 seconds, you can actually do it. And there you go, the flashlight's turning back on. Now, there are some caveats to know when you use the background automation. There's um, a thing within shortcuts where if a menu is being displayed, if another shortcut runs, whether it's a personal automation or this background automation system, it will cause the menu to disappear. So I'm going to tap background automations. You're going to see the menu appear and you can see it disappear because the background automation just ran to trigger low power mode. So now it's running my shortcut and you can see the flashlight turns on and off. So if I bring up the menu again, it might disappear again because the shortcuts, shortcuts is still running and it's causing menus to disappear. And this would happen if you had a personal automation that ran at 11 o'clock. And at that same moment, you ran another shortcut that displayed a menu. The menu would just disappear, okay? So that's something to keep in mind if you're running shortcuts like every 15 seconds or every 30 seconds. And hopefully that's something that the shortcuts team can address in iOS 15. And there one more time, it ran again. So I'm gonna just run this stop background automations from running. And what this is, is it just clears the action such that when the next interval happens, Background automations would stop and then shortcuts is back to normal. Nothing's running in the background. So there you go. A quick overview on how you can use background automations to kind of run shortcuts in the background automatically on a repeating interval. MSC Deck comes with over 30 custom actions that you can use in your own shortcuts to control and access data from MFC Deck. Let's take a quick look. Here are the list of actions. You can see you can create cards, decks, set the current deck, get the current deck, start the trigger server, and much, much more. I encourage you to take a look at the shortcuts in the MSC Deck shortcut gallery at mscdeck.com slash shortcuts to see how I use these actions to create custom experiences for MFC Deck. So there you go. A brief overview on how to use MFC Deck's main features and functionality. Take a look at the other videos I have in this channel. And please subscribe if you want to be notified when I have new videos on MFC Deck. In the coming year, I plan to release more videos on how to take advantage of the application, as well as show tutorials on how to use shortcuts and automations to get the most out of iOS. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next year.